lifelike and beautiful charcoals, liquid, flowing, realistic watercolors, inks that pool and drip, pencils that work like real pencils, acrylics that flow and mix like real acrylics, watercolor and oil that are almost unrivaled in anything out there. This is my review of Rebel 4, a software package that has blown me away. Let's get to it. What you see here is me starting with some charcoal. And I hadn't even played with charcoal uh, in Rebel 4 for the first, first week or two because I was just having so much fun with the fluid, realistic watercolors, the um, depth and impasto of the oils, and uh, comparing it to other softwares and just playing around with all the paint stuff. I missed out on the quality of just the basic drawing tools. Um, there is a pencil kit that has a bunch of different options, but for me, um, I don't really like drawing in pencil in real life, you know, with traditional art. So I, I was more interested in the charcoal. Um, the pencils are good. They could use a little bit more, um, you know, I have, a, I have a XP pen deco tablet, which has tilt and the, the tilt didn't really add much breadth or thickness to the stroke with the pencil. So I think there could be a little bit more there um, with something like Procreate where you, you lean the, the Apple Pencil, you get a really broad stroke with some of the pencil tools. And I'd like to see that um, added in here, but the pencils work great. They have a nice realistic mark. They interact with the texture of the paper, just like all the tools in Rebel 4 and in a really nice way. But the, the charcoals you see here, I sped this video up maybe like 50%, something like that. So it's almost a real time drawing with the charcoal and you can see that it just looks so good. The thing that I'm really fond of with this particular um, charcoal brush is the way that the, it almost seems to shoot uh, little pieces of like simulated charcoal dust off the end of each mark, which creates that very lifelike interaction between the dry media and the hard surface of the paper. Um, awesome stuff. There are little subtleties like that all across this software package that make me feel confident in recommending this to any artist, digital uh, or traditional. Um, it's just been, it's been a blast. So let's talk a little bit about the details. Um, I just switched my brush to like a smudging brush with the charcoal settings. You can um, just have it be, you know, like a, a, a tool that makes a mark or you can set it to a blend mode. So it uses that same brush head or, or, or brush shape and blends or smudges, uh, the it smudges kind of whatever pigment is on the canvas. And then the smudging and the mark making both interact with the three dimensional, um, like normal map or texture map on the canvas to make it look like that digital media is, is really truly interacting like traditional media would on the bumpy surface of whatever surface you choose. In this case, I think I'm working on just the standard watercolor setup. So very, very cool. Um, but it's not just that. You have the mark making, the blending, and then the eraser. So those are three little icons that sit underneath your size and opacity settings for whatever tool you have selected. Um, size and opacity is also super cool because one of my favorite uh, kind of like user quality of life, user interface choices from ArtRage, which is a tool that you guys, if you follow my channel, know I love so much. Um, they have, if you hold the shift key, you can just drag your stylus across your tablet and it will, it will, um, change the size big, small, right. And that saves you a lot of time. You don't have to go in and do like key, key commands or anything. It's just a really elegant way to resize your brush. Well, I think Rebel has taken it one step further, um, and made a beautiful and elegant so solution for not just brush size, but also opacity. So if you hold the control key, you can glide your brush you know, left to right, and that'll change the size. But if you go up and down, that'll change the opacity. Not every tool has opacity, um, like the oil tools don't have opacity, but it changes like, you know, the um, oiliness or whatever of the, of the tool. So each individual set of tools has a different control that's aligned with um, dragging up and down when you use the, the modifier on your keyboard control. So hold the control key, drag up and down to get a modification of one brush property. And then if you drag it left to right, it changes the size. That alone is 
huge. That's a that's a brilliant way of helping artists work more quickly, not have to get into menus to change some of the basic um, tools, you know, and some of the basic properties of your tool. So love that. Love the charcoal. Love the variety of, of built-in charcoal brushes. Just look at this drawing. I think in real time, it took me like 10 minutes to draw this. And it was honestly the first time I picked up the charcoal tools. So that's not me saying, oh, look, I'm fast at drawing. It's me saying, oh my gosh, this tool is so intuitive that someone who knows how to draw with like a pencil or a piece of charcoal in real life can literally just pick it up and start playing around and you will have success. It's it's very intuitive. It's very fast. It's very fluid. It's really responsive. And the I feel like it looks every bit as good as real charcoal. Like I, I'm very fond of it. So, um, this is what we need to talk about when we talk about a digital art software package, we're talking about the whole package. And I wanted to demonstrate some of the big pieces of that package. And I think drawing tools, um, while it's not as much my, my go-to, they are important. And I know a lot of people want to see how a software package performs in drawing. Another drawing tool is going to be inks. And you can see here, I'm just sketching the same reference image using the ink tools. And you see that there's like seven different presets for ink. Ink can be um, set to just, just paint, paint with a little blend, blend and paint, and then smudge and then erase. So you have like these modifiers for each of your tools. And that those kind of modifiers make for a really, really intuitive way of working. I think um, probably the most important thing is the consistency. So once you get used to how the inks work, or once you get used to how the oils work, it'll all start to make sense. Now, here's something else I got to show you. Check this out. I'm just going to not even talk. I can't help. I can't help it. I got to look at that. That is so cool. Um, when you see up in the top right corner, you can set the the tilt and the tilt, ag the aggressiveness of the tilt of your simulated work surface. The longer that blue line is, the more tilt you're sort of simulating. And then the wetness of the wet media will respond in kind. And so you can get naturalistic pooling, um, you know, edge bleed, and then full on drips from any of the wet media in this software. And it is it is awesome. It's mind boggling. So here's what I want to do is let's push on that idea a little bit more and demonstrate how watercolors work. Um, I'm starting again with ink, just working in some of like, you know, I guess like this is sort of uh, like a hybrid ink and, and watercolor approach. And, you know, I know a lot of people love doing that. And, and I just thought, it would really it'd be a good way to demonstrate what this software can do. So I'm using kind of like a, an ink brush more than like an ink pen. And um, you can see as I work, the, the way that you put down the pigment isn't the end of it. Um, there's like a lot of physics going on after you, your brush leaves the surface. And that's just like real watercolor or real ink. When you're working with really truly wet media, things happen, right? There's like this, this happenstance about it. There's this uh, serendipity about it. There's um, a sort of letting go when you're working with truly like wet media. So I love that as you, as you learn to work with this, just like as you learn to work with real watercolor or ink, um, you kind of lean into that a little bit and you can control with you know, granular detail, the amount of water, the amount of tilt, the amount of opacity, and in addition to the size and texture of your brush. So there's a lot you can do to control the outcome. Um, but, but you know, for those of you that want to have like that feeling of true watercolor painting where, where things happen and paint interacts and the edge, edges of the paint and the, and the merging of colors happens sort of right before your eyes, well, you get the benefit of that here in a way that is not present on any other software that I have ever painted with. And for that alone, it's a must buy software package. It's, it's fun. I mean, it's so fun. I have to say that I am not as familiar with painting in the watercolor tools as I am with the oils or the acrylics, um, because that's kind of where I go, you know, intuitively. Uh, that's where I, how I work traditionally, I'm an oil painter. And so um, I gravitate toward that. 
I do do occasional water painting or watercolor paintings um, in my my traditional studio, but um, not as much. And I don't I don't really like you know it's not my preference. the The look of watercolor is not my preference compared to oils in in kind of my traditional paint setup. So I don't you know I'm not like a connoisseur. You know, uh, this isn't my it's not my home court. So. That, that said, um, I did find a couple tools that are amazing to me. I really like the three Sumi presets. The Sumi painting is something that I've done a little bit. Um, I had a, a family member that brought me a Sumi paint set from Japan, and it, it was something that I played around with quite a bit when I was in high school and also in college. And I love the the sumi paint strokes and the sumi paint like the texture of the mark and i love the way that it interacts with the surface it's really really cool and so i found myself interested in those tools a lot um and then i like the big moppy kind of uh chunky watercolor as well because you can see how um it, the bleed and the and the mixing and just the the way that you can create these big washes of color, um, and and just so you know, I think I left this at at almost real time painting speed, so you can kind of see the interaction and the blending and the merging of the colors. It's just it's just super fun, and I wanted you to be able to see that. And 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 you know, I know sometimes with a review, it's good to kind of speed things up so it goes fast, but. This is the first time I've painted in watercolor in in Rebel on camera, and I wanted to be able to show you guys like, you know, the nuance of it because it's it's different. Um, I'm coming from Photoshop. I'm coming from ArtRage. I'm coming from Procreate, and this is different. And you know, I, I have to admit, like, it gets away from me sometimes. Like, it gets a little too drippy or it gets a little too smudgy because I am not used to like, oh, well, how much water do I use or what what should the opacity be set for. And, and all that to say, it's not like it's overwhelming. You know, you can you can see all the things that need to happen. If you put down a mark and the water gets a little all over the place, you're like, oh, that's too much water. And you just, you know, unlike traditional paint, you can just press control Z, undo your mark and and adjust the brush setting and try again. And, um, you know, I, I felt like as I started this, my painting was kind of like falling off the page, kind of like dripping down. And I was kind of like, you know, I loved that because it was it it's sort of magical. It's like, wow, what's happening? This is so cool. But um, as I got into it, I kept thinking, oh, I want to kind of tidy this up. I want to make it look good. I want to kind of, you know, fix these 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 things. Um, one more thing, though, that that's really cool is you can you literally use your watercolor brush as an eraser, which is like, I mean, that's also magical, right? Like how many times have you guys been painting in, in traditional watercolor, whether it's recently or, you know, back in, in when you were in grade school and you like, you know, you know what happens. You make a mistake and it's game over with watercolor. I mean, you can kind of sponge it up a little bit, but it's it's there. Um with digital, you just press control Z or you use your watercolor eraser and you just erase out areas that overbleed or you get too saturated or whatever. So um, it's like a super cool user-friendly way to get into watercolor. Um, I think the asset, the virtue of watercolor is not just the serendipity and, and kind of like um, wow factor of the liquid physics, but it's it, it does have a really um, poetic kind of um, feeling, you know, watercolor. And so I think... I think it may it may be something that I I don't just tinker with, but actually you know intend to do some real projects with because um, I love not having to stretch my paper and tape it down and um, and deal with the the wrinkling of paper and 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 deal with the expense of buying really nice watercolor paper. You know, like I'm more of a a minimalist with art. You know, I I like. I will reuse every canvas and I just gesso over stuff and I'll, I'll scrape and sand stuff down. And I like the more um, hands-on kind of aggressive nature of oils um, when it comes to watercolor and having to like, I don't like to go spend $10 on a nice piece of watercolor paper. You know, I just want to get a pe cheap piece of masonite from, from Home Depot and then <laughs> cut it up and make a, like, you know, 20 canvases and not, not think about it. So um, the delicacy of watercolor in real life is a little bit bothersome to me and I'm not interested in that. But if you can look right now and see all those drips happening um, and, and 
and I can have all the coolness of that and play with that and all the beautiful texture and the way it reveals the texture and tooth of the paper. And I don't have to mess with all of the expense and, and um, careful setup of watercolors. Yes, please. You know, and that's a, that's an awesome virtue of the digital version of watercolor is it's not a, it's not only like a training tool and like getting the sense of how something works in, in, I think it really, it's so accurate that you could actually learn to watercolor paint to a degree um, tr traditionally by playing with this. Um, but I like that you can get the look of it without having to deal with the frustration of actual watercolor in real life. And that that's true of the oils as well. I mean, um, I've, I will often have students, you know, if you have like a younger student and I'll get there, their parent will call me and be like, hey, you got to teach my son oils because uh, he just you know, he just ruined our living room with the oils and that happens all the time, you know, with, with traditional paint. So we have to, we have to, uh, embrace the good of this digital stuff. And one of the good things about this digital is the digital tools is that they, they are toxicity free, at least, you know, to us and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and they're mess free. So it's, it's really, really cool. Um, now I wanted to explore a little bit of the interaction of paint and paint. And you can see that now we have a watercolor painting and we have a charcoal drawing. And now what I'm doing is using some of the, the chunky, thick oil paint brushes to just lay down some mark. Um, because this is a really amazing, uh, over-the-top feature of Rebel, which is that the watercolors or any of the wet media don't just react and respond to the virtual texture of the of the paint uh, i mean of the paper but they actually re react interact and and drip into in in realistic ways the three-dimensional texture of the paint that's laid down before any liquid mark goes on so this is a whole like game changing thing just watch this liquid paint drip onto the three-dimensional texture of the oil paint it flows and blends differently on the paint body than it does on the paper and that is i mean whoever designed this this is a, a work of passion and this is a beautiful this is a beautiful thing i mean that if you have ever glazed over like if you've ever done an oil painting and you glaze it it does this kind of stuff if you glaze it but you don't put enough um fluid or 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 liquid into it it will look like that i mean exactly like that and um if you've ever painted real thin and in your paint you know starts dripping on top of already laid down um layer of oil paint this is what it looks like and so the, the ability to play with really fluid media on top of more dimensional media is another level altogether i think again we're looking at a software package that has really really matured and gives you the artist a lot of creative tools and then you know you don't have to worry though if you don't want your digital tools to be super messy you can just change the tilt of your table to almost zero so that they just kind of stay in place um it's up to you. So it's it's as if you're working on a flat table surface with your watercolor or you're on an incline and you can decide how you want to do that. Um, one of the things I really love is you can kind of have the best of both worlds. So let's say you're playing with tilt and you're letting that paint drip. As soon as you push the F key, it'll freeze all of the dripping. So I like, this is the way I like to do it is I like to have some of the drip going, but I like to freeze it kind of um, mid drip so it doesn't get too wild i like to kind of have my cake and eat it too right so i'm always trying to find that solution that gives me the best of both worlds um but here i just wanted to show you interactions between different media and if this isn't blowing your mind then i don't i don't know who you are because this is so cool and again you with that quick access with the control key that you can like slide things up and down side to side to change brush properties there's there's some of the loading of the brush um, so that particular setting, this is the oil brush. You change the loading, which is ba basically like the thickness. Um, that's like oil paint version of opacity, right? Um, it's just the coolest thing ever. So now let's jump over to another medium. I like painting in gouache as well. Gouache is like, gouache is weird. Um, it, it comes from this like historic egg tempera where people would literally make their own pigment, mixing it with, um, with like this egg mixture um, 
and my mentor, he was this former Walt Disney painter, you know, he used to make his own and we used to talk about all, you know, how arduous it was to make your own paints and stuff like that. But um, here, you know, it's the world has moved to such, moved on in such a great to, to, to such a great degree that now you just, you know, push a button on your computer and you have gouache. Well, here's what gouache is. If you're not familiar with it, it's, it's kind of like a, um, a semi-opaque to fully opaque watercolor. Um, you can paint with it real loose and fluid like you would watercolor and, and it will work that way. Or you can paint with it real thick and opaque, um, like you would acrylic but the thing that's nice about it is it it's always stays workable so whereas like when acrylic dries that plastic or acrylic base of the paint becomes immobilized you know it's it's immutable so um then when you have uh, by contrast the, the gouache you know you can always go back and re and rework it um what i like about it is um it's great for quick studies and and i love the it's like the way that it handles. It's kind of like a challenge mode, I, you know, coming from oil paint where you, it's all about mixing. Here, I just love how the gouache works. And I did just this quick watercolor gouache study, and I wanted to just show you that as well. Um, I take at the end here, um, what did I do? Oh, yeah, I took the pencil tool, and I just started adding some highlights on top of it, almost like if you were to take like a Prismacolor set of colored pencils and draw some of the highlights back in. Um, that was just kind of a nice a nice way to work and I, and I had a lot of fun with it so again you know this isn't finished and it's it's very rough but I wanted to give you sort of a feeling like a tour um, a speed tour of like all these different ways of working in this one software package and if if there's one consistent theme it's that all of these media look very dimensional very realistic and behave very closely to their traditional counterparts. Um, now let's go in and then do a, a quick speed painting of that same subject using the oils. And um, the oils for me are, they're amazing as well. I would say that I, I still prefer the Art Rage oils a little bit more to the Rebel oils, but I prefer the Rebel like at Rebel as an entire software package, the charcoal, the pencils, the inks, the realistic fluid media that the way that all of the wet media works and flows and drips with true physics and all of that stuff as a package, like the watercolor is, is best in class, best on, on, on any app I've ever used. The gouache similar, uh, the, the inks, the same, um, the acrylics the same uh, i think just about everything is like best in class the one thing i would say is that like i said i still prefer art rage for oils but i would say rebel is not far behind um there's one i think i need to bring up one other thing like on the technology side i made a mistake in talking about um my my understanding of of its of hardware acceleration with graphics cards and rebel um, I, I misunderstood. I thought that Rebel was using graphics cards to, um, like it was gra using your GPU to enhance the performance. But, but I found that that is not the case. It's just CPU reliant. And while it can be kind of like, um, it can really love to use a lot of your RAM. So having like 32 gigs of RAM is a good idea. Um, I don't feel like it's it's like out of line in terms of, you know, you don't need to have like a beast of a computer to run this at all. Um, and, and I just find that if you're going to go out and spend, um, you know, a few hundred dollars to get painter or, you know, even if you get it on sale for 50 bucks or whatever, I would rather have rebel over painter. I would rather have rebel over almost anything, um, except, uh, except Photoshop for sure. You got to have that still, but if you're like, want that traditional look, you kind of have two choices and that's rebel or art rage. And I love both of those softwares for different reasons. I think Rebel is the winner when it comes to the wet media, like the fluid media, the kind of drippy watercolor, that kind of thing. Um, I think ArtRage is, is still king of oil paints. Um, but it, but I'd say that there's, um, you know, not a lot but between the two when it comes to oil paints. They're both really good. As you can see here, um, 
It's just, it's just fast and fluid and natural and easy. And I love it. So, you know, if, if you only can buy one thing and you want the like total package, uh, Rebel is, is a highly, highly, highly recommended software solution and you got to go for it. And you can go to their website and download the free demo and just, just do it. Like, what are you waiting for? This is like fun you could be having right now. So, um, uh, let's see. What else did I want to talk about? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, brush creation is something I wanted to talk about. I've been exploring a little bit with a really interesting facet of brush creation and, and I just stumbled into it, but you can set up multiple brush heads for each individual brush and you can change the way that they interact and how, um, so basically you could like have a a round brush become a square brush or you can have a flat become um, a square, become a round or whatever. And you can set up different textures for each one or whatever, you know, basically using any brush head and you can have the software interpret the way that those different, brush heads will interact to create really unique brush strokes. That's something I'm playing with right now that is just amazing. It's so cool. So if you, um, you got to realize I've only been playing with this software for a couple weeks and, and you know, it's already had like, um, two performance updates and a couple like bug squashing updates. But when you get a brand new release, like a, you know, like a, a 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, in this case, a 4.0 release, brand new software release, there's always going to be a couple things that have to get fixed. It's good to see that they're fixing those fast and quickly. We're on um, 4.05, I think is the release. Uh, This is is the sort of the software release that I did the review on. And it's fast, efficient, good, fun, crazy, um, amazing, mind-blowing. Like just look at this paint dripping right now. See, it just, even as I'm talking, it's slowly dripping in the background and I can't stand it. It's so cool. Um, I think that for any digital artist, you have to have it. It's, it's a must purchase software. Absolutely. And, um, the other thing I would say is, you know, the fact that I'm, I'm still relatively new to Rebel, uh, and I mean like really, really new to be honest. Yeah, I've painted like less than seven paintings in my life with it. Not very many of them even finished. So you're seeing me still in that tinkering phase where I'm still trying to get my 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 brain wrapped around all that it can do. And it's gonna be a while until I I really do have a deep sense of what I'm doing with this. So I'm expecting a lot of growth in terms of what I um, the kind of work that I'm doing and also the kind of work that I can share and the kind of tutorials I can do and the kind of brushes I can make for the community, all of that. So I'm really excited, um, for what's ahead. I want to play with everything and I want to work with everything and I want to learn it all. So, um, here's, you know, just me trying to do that and share my learning along the way. And I really, really hope, uh, this is helpful for you guys, but please go out and give it a try. Rebel 4 is amazing and it has my highest recommendation hope you guys have fun happy painting